Hey guys, what's up? Paladin here, and this is another episode of uh, WWE Talk with uh, me and Zach. So, hope you guys are staying sexy. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so we're gonna do. Uh, first of all, we're gonna talk about CM Punk possibly making a return on Raw tomorrow because today is uh, February the second or March the second. I'm stupid. Uh, <laughs> Raw is on the third, so that's gonna be tomorrow, and. Uh, which makes sense a little bit since it is CM Punk's hometown. However, uh, it doesn't make too much sense since, you know, he's not supposed to be, you know, he kind of left, you know? Yeah. Strange. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to like look at Zach and be like, water bottle, and without saying water bottle. But of course I have to say water bottle because Zach doesn't know what I'm talking about. Well, I did. Like when Give me my damn water bottle! Oh, that's what you meant. Yes! So you meant put my water bottle down. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> was that fun? Yes, it was. Shut up. Anyways. Uh, Alright, so uh, what, what's your take on CM Punk's uh, possible return on Raw? Um, it should be real good and real exciting. And he'll get a real big pop if he does come back. See, what's, uh, what's, it's just, it is really weird, though, because, you know, it was, like... Kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, like, he did... It was only, like, a month ago. Yeah, he did, you know, actually leave-ish, you know, uh, and it was confirmed, practically, that he did leave, he walked out and everything, uh, and that, you know, WWE was, like, unliking him on Facebook or Twitter and everything else or whatever, and... They were, like, losing connections with him. And then out of nowhere, I guess I guess Vince or whatever called him in and said, Hey, dude, we're doing your hometown. You sure you don't want to stop by or something? And, you know. Yeah. Because I don't think CM Punk needs WWE, but Vince might need CM Punk. Punk. Yeah, He's I such was, a big draw. Yeah, it's just, if you think about it, um, and we're going to talk about another topic later, but there are stars right now are either falling out of place or they're getting injured, you know, at the moment. They need, so, you know, when CM, like yeah, that. yeah, you know, they need CM Punk and stuff like that. They can draw, too, like, he's a, you know, big name, you know, so, I don't know. Yeah, Chicago is one of their great crowds, though, and, uh, it's probably one of their, one of their top five, actually, crowds, probably. They always, they always are really loud and, you know, into it and definitely everything. Yeah, they're definitely up there. You should do that one day. Top huh? five crowds or something. Top five crowds. <laughs> Top ten. That'd be cool. Um, Buffalo, New York. We were we're all right. <laughs> we're all right. We were good. Yeah. Not with that uh old school raw, wherever that was. Oh yeah, the uh the old school raw that happened this year. Get here, Pendro. Holy crap! It was it was terrible. Uh, we we and this is off topic, but we had a, a old school raw come to our town, uh last year. And, uh, it was, it was great and everything. You know, the crowd was all right. We generally, everybody was practically probably drunk though, almost, but, uh. That expensive beer. No, it's. It's like freaking, nine bucks. Yeah, it is. It's really expensive. Everything expensive there. Everything is expensive at the fucking first Niagara Center. Water's anyway. like five bucks. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, but. Another you know, topic. You know, our crowd was all right, but like old school raw this year, holy shit, they were terrible. Oh my god, apparently, like, the crowd was apparently just filled with, like, kids or something like that or whatever. <laughs> Makes sense on an old school raw. I just, oh my god, I was, <laughs> never do that again. Mommy, who's that? Mommy, who's the guy with the snake? Seriously, he should have got a big pop. Snake, Jake the Snake Robert should have got a big pop, and, like, everybody was just like... Dean Ambrose is marking out. He was smiling. He was smiling because <laughs> the snake, like, just was on his face and he couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um... Yeah, so that's apparently CM Punk's returning on Raw. Uh, personally, how I may feel about this uh, is I'm not exactly sure. You know, it is really just, it's random. Because, uh, again, he he actually did leave, and then he's all of a sudden possibly coming back. You know, it's a rumor, so don't heavily take it in. You know, like take it with a, a grain of salt. Yeah, take it with a grain of salt and everything. And uh, actually, what's, uh, what's funny, actually, is that there's actually this plan to hijack Raw. Uh, the Chicago, a lot of the Chicago crowd actually is liking this one, uh, is following this one Twitter page called Hijack Raw, and it's for uh, uh, March the third. Uh, and the reason I'm telling you not to do that is because it's picking, it'll probably pick up on the phone. 
But uh, anyways, um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, Zach's like hitting this door repeatedly with his foot, <laughs> uh, which is where my phone. Not really hitting that foot. It any just, kind of just tap. any kind of sound sets it off though. Like any kind of even if you don't hear it, the phone will be like wiggle in the in the like in the recording. It's annoying. Well, uh, you shall see when it gets up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, hijack the stool. Hijack the stool. Hijack Zach so he stops messing with my damn stool. Anyways, uh, hump day. Hump day. If you guys don't know where that's from, it's from a YouTube poop. We are getting off topic as fuck. Can we please get back to Hijack Raw? All right, but, especially from a Geico commercial, but was was it from a Geico commercial? Yeah, then it turned into a YouTube poop. Oh my god. Anyways, um, yeah, apparently the Chicago crowd though is planning on hijacking Raw on the third or whatever. I don't exactly know what the hell they're going to do, per se. I guess they're just going to heavily... Do everything. Yeah, I guess they're just going to do a, a bunch of CM Punk chants. Chant and... everything. No, actually, I actually heard that they're planning to boo every last thing that comes out, but, like, besides Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. Everything else gets booed, but it's not besides Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. Part of me kind of likes that, just because it's kind of cool, but part of me doesn't like that, because someone made a good point, too. I read about, like, it is kind of disrespectful to, like, some of the wrestlers. I can understand if you really don't like them, but, like, you know, kind of bone them for no reason. Like somebody. Well, I think people would still cheer, like, maybe Ziggler and stuff like that. Yeah. But if it's, like, you know, a match that you really don't care about or yeah. a promo that you really don't care about, you Random know, that, match. Yeah, that they're just going to boo it. Yeah. Um, it should be fun to see. Interesting. Three hours. Yeah. Um, this, uh, let's just say tomorrow is going to be very interesting. Yeah. It's going to be very Sure don't miss that one. Yeah, don't miss tomorrow's, uh, Raw. Hopefully I have this uploaded by, t- uh, before tomorrow anyways. I should have it I'm by... About Tuesday. No. <laughs> I should have it, um, if not tonight, this video should be up tomorrow morning. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, that's... I mean, Chicago's idea to hijack Raw, and there's going to be tons of signs and everything, and... Yeah, but, uh, you know, if CM Punk does show up and everything, what I personally think should happen is that, like, you know, they're about to go off air and everything or whatever, and their last segment's going on, and then CM Punk comes out, you know, that would be pretty much the definitive thing that I would have. I wouldn't have him come out at the very beginning Hulk because, Hogan. yeah, like Hulk Hogan. I, well, that thing, that was that, that worked. That worked, though. No, I'm just saying. Because, you like, know, The Undertaker, Undertaker came out later and did the whole... Yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes perfectly sense in an example. But, yeah, I was just thinking, like... Sam like, while you were saying something to me, yeah. or something, I was like, uh, should he come back, like, beginning or end? Yeah, I, I was think, like, yeah, I think the end would make a lot more sense. I think CM know? Punk coming out at the end of the show, uh, would make a lot more sense. Build and, it up. And, yeah, you know, even though the crowd it's is like probably... A climax. Even though the crowd is destroying, you know, the, the show already and everything, yeah. but... Yeah. Which, personally, me and Zach are gonna enjoy. He'll come back, they're just gonna cheer so hard. It's gonna be ridiculous when he does. Yeah. If he does. If, yeah, if CM Punk comes out, it will be insane. I actually yesterday I was watching the uh, the John Cena versus CM Punk match. I didn't Isn't watch the, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched the crowd reaction. That's so good. That, like CM Punk's crowd when he went you know at Money in the Bank 2011 was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, like Jerry was like, if the Super Bowl was like in Chicago and if it was the Bears playing or something like their hometown, it was like their hometown hero. You know. Yeah. That's like CM Punk basically. But uh. Next up, we actually have, uh, we're talking about stuff, you know, from WrestleMania and saying how they're kind of losing talent possibly for WrestleMania, you know, CM Punk, so they kind of need CM Punk to come back and everything. Um, next up is actually John Cena on Raw, last Raw, which was, I don't remember the, the date, actually. Anyways, last Raw, before, the Raw before March 3rd's Raw, um, of 2014, uh, John Cena made it look like he got injured by the Wyatt family, um, and uh, it was it was actually him making twenty seventh row, twenty seventh row. Okay, January twenty seventh then. Uh, but John Cena made it look like he got injured from the uh, Wyatt family, which is true. He made it look like he got injured. It's exactly how you say it, uh, because it was a work. It you know it wasn't. John Cena literally getting injured. Me and Zach actually thought he was injured, though. It looked like a, a, a actual leg injury. Uh, but he apparently actually did get injured, though, at, uh, at some point. Um, 
I didn't want to say the specific body part, but apparently, you know, it's 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 the area. It's not exactly. It doesn't it doesn't mean his his private area is hurt or anything. But apparently, he suffered some sort of groin injury, and like it like it didn't happen on Raw per se. It apparently slowly happened, and on a house show after Raw, it, that's when it really kicked in. And people were kind of booing the match even more than usual because a lot of people don't like John Cena already. But uh, people were like, you know, booing the match more than, you know, they usually would and stuff because John Cena wasn't really giving his all and the match was kind of really boring considering he wasn't doing too much. He actually apparently uh, apologized to the crowd afterwards after the match. If you guys want to look this stuff up, it's all on Raw. Yeah, no, um... The house show? The house show, yeah. Oh, okay. He apologized on, at the house show, because he, you know, wasn't giving it his all, and, you know, he had a match and everything, and oh, he... That was nice. Yeah, um... If you guys are wondering, by the way, we get most of our stuff from Bleacher Report, so if you don't believe us and what we're saying, just go to Bleacher Report. It's right there. That's where we read our stuff from, but anyways... Well, it's Bleacher Report and several other sites, but most of the time it's Bleacher Report. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, he had a match on a house show, and his uh, he did something to his groin area, and he uh, couldn't fight you know the match the way he wanted to. And after the match was over at the house show, he apologized to the crowd and said, "I'm sorry that I you know couldn't perform the way I wanted to tonight for you guys." Uh, so that is nice of him though. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's his injury though and everything, which is kind of you know upsetting. A, a little bit because yeah, yeah if you're wondering. so close to WrestleMania. Yeah, it's so close to WrestleMania. Is the recorder still going off? By the way, I'm hoping the recorder is still going off. The recorder is still going off. Okay, I was a little worried. The phone like shut off for a second. Um, Jesus. Yeah, but um, uh, Cena actually literally got an injury though, so we don't know how how long he could be out and everything. So. If he's not here for Mania and everything, that's another big talent that they're missing for Mania. Plus, if you think about it, Cena hasn't missed a, a, a WrestleMania since he started doing WrestleManias. Just about, it would be 2003, I think. And he made an appearance there, but he didn't wrestle that one. Like he's made, But he's always been there, you know? Pretty much, yeah. Since he's been there, yeah. Yeah, since he started wrestling, uh, I'd say since 2003, uh, John Cena's always had a, a wrestling match or made some sort of big appearance at WrestleMania, you know, and uh, him not... the main event. Or pretty much always, yeah, at the main event. So, you know... This is Big Show, I think, that was the only main event he wasn't in. Yeah, so, you know, if John Cena doesn't appear for WrestleMania, you know, that's a big-time loss for WWE because they're losing another one of their big stars. Uh, what is your take on this? Yeah, like you said, it'll be losing another star for WrestleMania. Like, desperate when they need it, uh... And, like, that would be a good match, too. Him versus Bray Wyatt, which is their, what their plan is. That could be a really good match. And the good thing about that is if they let Bray Wyatt win, maybe not even that, but just, like, you know, he'll get elevated because of that match, you know, even more than he yeah. already is. And, you know, just bring it to new heights in the shield a little bit, you know. So that's just another little loss there. Yeah, but, um... Uh, let's see here. So, you know, we talked about John Cena's injury and everything, and that's, you know, another star that WWE is potentially losing on and everything. But next up, we've got uh, stars actually kind of leaving the show pretty much, sort of-ish. Uh, a lot of WWE superstars at the moment aren't happy with their position, hence why CM Punk actually left in the first place. Um, if, you, if you're wondering, if you're a Ryback fan... Uh, or at least you're curious about Ryback and how he's doing and everything. Um, you'll probably notice that Ryback hasn't actually been on the show as much as he used to because Ryback actually wrestled, I think, like every Raw and SmackDown he used to actually. He, he did work a lot. Yeah, like, you know, Ryback worked a lot on Raw and SmackDown. If you noticed, recently he's not been, you know, on there too much. And apparently it's because... Uh, Ryback's been sort of in a war, uh, with WWE on Twitter, uh, arguing, you know, besides the funny tweets that he does with the fans. Then he deletes them. Yeah, and then he deletes them. Uh, he's been doing some fun. He probably does it because, I mean, they're up, like, you know, because he'll probably get, like, heat or something from the WWE. That's why he deletes them so fast, you know? He doesn't want to get some trouble that much, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Ryback apparently 
has been taken off the show pretty much. He's been taken off Raw and SmackDown, and he's only on every now and then. Uh, the reason for this being, again, is because apparently he's just been getting in arguments uh, with WWE on Twitter. And I, I don't, you know, the, it's kind of annoying to me, actually. I don't really know how to describe it. Uh, it annoys me, like, if the WWE superstars that work for, you know, WWE give their opinion, it's all of a sudden such a bad thing, you know, for them to do that, you know? What's, yeah, it's like, oh, you know, you know just our opinion, you know? Yeah, how do you, how do you, how do you describe that? Yeah, um, it's kind of unfair, like, they punish him, you know, too, for, like, some of the stuff they say, so, I don't know, I think they just need to relax or something, you know? Yeah, it's... It's not like they're, you know, like, let's say they go out or something, they don't, like, do the match as planned or something, or, like, do the script or something, like, then they, like, okay, you're not doing this, you know, like, this is just, like, word, you know, kind of, if you know what I mean, like, it's just the social media thing, it's not, like, a big even thing. E- even, if, in my opinion... If a wrestler, say for example, a wrestler, you know, has a match, like, practically every single day, not day, but uh, every single uh, Raw or something like that. Let's say a a certain wrestler wrestles every single Raw in one year, and that they, say for example, maybe three of those Raws, they, they botched. I don't personally think they should be, you know, say for example, they're a high rating superstar. I don't think they should be dropped to the mid card or even lower if... You know, they botch three times throughout the year or something. Yeah, that's really unfair. Um, I mean, if it's a really big thing, though, like... But, like, what you're saying, like, some botch or something? Like then... how John Cena wasn't supposed to win against Brock Lesnar at uh, the Extreme Rules 2012, was it? Yeah, I don't think... They weren't punishing Brock Lesnar, were they? He didn't do anything, right? No, they didn't punish Brock Lesnar. They punished Cena because Cena wasn't supposed to win the match. Oh, okay. Uh, but they didn't even punish Cena, though, after that, which was a little retarded, but, you know... Whatever. Anyways, uh, like, if it's something like that, like, you know, if a superstar wasn't supposed to win the match, then yeah, then they should be, the person that won the match should get punished. But, uh... But it... I was about to say, yeah. like, uh, if you're made an event like that scene or something, you rarely get punished, too, which is, like, sort of the favoritism, too, and, like, if you're in a certain group in the WWE, like, you know, Triple H's buddies, if you're, like, at the top level, you might not get punished, because, like, you're up there, if you know what I mean, like, if you're, like, a Ziggo or something, you'll... Sometimes they don't really matter to you or something. Yeah, um... And you'll just get, you know... Speaking punished. of... Yeah, sp- speaking of Ziggler, actually, this is another reason why we're bringing up this topic, is because Ziggler just started... Now, we don't know, because this is a just-started kind of thing. The Ryback thing has already been confirmed. Uh, but Ziggler just started, you know, arguing with the WWE as well with his tweets uh, as of recent, since SmackDown uh, last Friday. Apparently, what happened is that, you know, you guys should know that SmackDown is taped, and that... It's taped on Tuesdays, and then on Friday, apparently, when it aired on TV, WWE decided to take out Ziggler chants. Like, you know, people chanting, we want Ziggler, or just chanting Dolph Ziggler in general. Was it during Batista's match it was, or it was It was during when Ziggler came out during Batista's promo and during their match. So, you know, for those of you guys that watch SmackDown, Ziggler... Came out on Batista's promo and, you know, talked smack to Batista and then said, you know what, if you're such a big guy, let's have a match. And then during the match, Ziggler, there were also Ziggler chants then, and WWE apparently removed some of them. Uh, And Ziggler pretty much posted on Twitter, he was like, uh, nice job, WWE creative team, for removing my, uh, removing Ziggler chants. And then uh, after that, he also said you know, to the WWE universe or whatever. He's like, keep letting, keep letting your voices be heard guys. Thanks a lot. And, you know, kept just t- in general talking more smack to WWE, uh, in general. So much for freedom of, freedom of speech, you know? Yeah. WWE doesn't like to believe in that, I guess. Especially on SmackDown where they, where it is taped and they can just remove every chant they don't want to hear. Or add in cheers or boos. You know, apparently I heard, um, the shield, you know, they get like boos or something, you know, put in there, even though a bunch of people like them. So, that's yeah. one thing. Personally, I think the shield is more so a neutral but kind of face at the moment because uh, they're fighting the Wyatt family, and the Wyatt family is extremely heel right now. And they defied uh, Triple H on SmackDown, I believe it was. Uh, like, the Wyatt family are going to be fighting... Uh, actually, that's another big thing that's happening tomorrow. The Wyatt Wyatt fa- yeah, the Wyatt family are fighting the shield tomorrow with a, in a rematch. And, uh, Triple H told, came out, you know, when the Wyatt family was talking and the Shield came out, 
Uh, Triple H said, you know, we're going to deal this, we're going to do this on Raw, don't do it now. The Shield just kind of looked at Triple H and, you know, just started going at the Wyatt family and they started fighting and then, you know, eh, they pretty much defied Triple H. You know, most people thought, you know, the Shield was under Triple H's, you know, law or whatever and now they're not. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't have much to say about that, but... What do you mean? I don't know. After you said something, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I think you covered it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Ziggler's, I'm hoping that they don't do the same thing that they did with Ryback to Ziggler. I really enjoy Ziggler, and if you guys didn't notice, I didn't particularly, I don't really watch SmackDown anymore, but I watch the wins on the WWE YouTube channel, uh, and people said that Ziggler actually made Batista look good, and that Ziggler, as always, looked good, and, uh, that's just... I mean, Ziggler just, he's like one of those guys like Cena or Punk where they bring out the better, you know, or even Brian now these days, uh, they they bring out the better and the, the more weaker superstar, if you know what I mean. Yeah. The, yeah, people like that. Like, for example, uh, Cena elevated Cesaro pretty damn high in that one match on uh, Raw. Yeah. In most cases, other people are elevating Cena, but in that case, yeah. Maybe yeah. He was elevating Cesaro. No, he, he Cena actually says that he likes Cesaro and that he he does promote him yeah. pretty good actually. Wow. Yeah. Um. But the next thing to talk about though is that we uh, we actually are going to be talking about WrestleMania a, a lot here actually. Uh. And one thing that we're going to be bringing up is the undercard WrestleMania matches, like what particular matches that we could see, uh, possibly on WWE, uh, or I mean on WrestleMania, uh, thirty. Uh, so pretty much, we went on Bleacher Report, as we always do, and, uh, they listed, you know, about nine matches here, and some of them make sense, and some of them don't, it's like, my, yeah, Zach's already sitting here kind of laughing at the first one, most likely that's the one you're laughing at. Laughing at some, yes, yeah, like, you were you're in it before, and now, yeah, um, some ridiculous ones. All right, so the first ridiculous one that uh, Bleacher Report recommended that WWE should do for WrestleMania 30 is Miz versus Big Show. How do you feel? You're gonna cry, Big Show. How do you feel about that? How do you react to that, Zach? I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, Bleacher Report. I don't think I want to see this even on a payback or something, on like a lesser pay per view. I don't really don't care. I mean, was this a raw match? Like. <laughs> WWE, uh, or I mean Bleacher Report, I, I don't understand your your logic here. I don't want to see this match at all. Uh, and the, the name of the article was Matches That WWE Should Consider for WrestleMania 30's Undercard. And I was like, all right, so let's read this. And then I saw Big Z Miz versus Big Show, and I'm like, what the fuck are you thinking? Yeah, this is weird, too, because I don't think either of them will get on the pay-per-view like where they are now. Yeah, I don't it, think... It seems like they'll just get left off. I really don't see Miz and... Actually, Maybe Big Show's... But Miz, I don't really see him. Actually, on going back to the the Ryback and Ziggler thing, uh, apparently Miz isn't on TV anymore because he's been talking his like. Miz apparently during matches would come out, and I don't know if you guys noticed a while back, Miz would come out during matches and say something and then leave. Apparently, he wasn't supposed to do that. WWE got mad at him for doing that, and that's why he hasn't been on TV. What he what he say a few weeks ago or something? Like he always would say, "Oh, look at these two. He usually says something like, "Oh, look at these two wrestling right here." But you got talent like me or something out here not doing anything. Oh yeah, I was thinking he, he, he something would say, Seth Rollins did. But. Yeah, he he says something like you know usually something like that when he comes out. So uh, I don't see Miz or Big Show being on the card at all actually. Yeah, I really know. That was kind of random. Now one that I think makes they pick names out of hat. Yeah, I, one that <laughs> makes sense. That I would actually love to see is Cesaro versus Jack Swagger, uh, because they're they are they're kind of like the Shield at the moment. They're kind of building cracks. Seems more likely to happen. Yeah, it, 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 they're kind of building cracks inside of their tag team, uh, because Cesaro and Swagger have been doing things like tagging each other out when they weren't supposed to and getting frustrated at each other and stuff. And uh, I think Cesaro would win this match. By the way, who do you, who do you think would win the match as well? Probably Cesaro. That's yeah. probably the best thing to go. I really don't want the real Americans to break up. I kind of like them, actually. I could, but seeing as they're going, I, they'll I, probably break them up. I could care less, to be honest. Yeah, I like them, though. Uh, the reason I don't we care... The, people. the reason I don't care about the real Americans is because Zeb Coulter barely does anything these Zeb days. Zeb amazing. No, he does not do anything he these days. He is an amazing no. manager. He does not do anything these days. What does he do recently? Like, what does a manager usually do? 
Like they're supposed to sit there and cheer on their opponent and give speeches and promos, and they do, he, he hasn't been doing that. He's amazing. End he just sit, he just sits there like this, and when they lose, he goes ah and gets all mad. He says some stuff. Rarely. He's good though. He's ge- he's genius on the mic. Moving on. Uh, one that I particularly kind of don't want to see. But I mean, I guess it makes sense. Is this four tag team? This four tag team match. Uh, there's four teams. It's Ryback and Curtis Axel versus the Usos versus the Outlaws versus Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes. Personally, I just would love to see the Usos and the Outlaws go at it, and then the Usos win. What is your take on this? Um, I think it was like January or something. This could be more likely to happen, but now. They're just going to have a rematch like they did Elimination Chamber, the Outlaws, and the Usos. And I think the Usos are going to have their, you know, big win and win the tag team titles, big moment. And I think that should be a good match. I think maybe just a regular tag team match, you know, will give it a more more focus on the two guys instead of maybe a little bit more cluttered. Because sometimes in those matches, you know, like, it can be a little chaosy and stuff like that. And maybe not as good as a match as just a regular one. Yeah, personally, I, I don't really I don't really care for it. I would like to see this in a ladder match, though. Yeah, if this if was... They a, if they did a four-way... If they did a four-way ladder match, this would be pretty cool, but or I... Or like a TLC or something. Yeah, I... Or a TLC, yeah. Um, but I, I really don't care for this, to be honest. I just want to see two teams go at it and win the championships. Especially since there's no money in the banks at WrestleMania anymore. Something like this, which is, you know, which is retarded. Thing. Which yeah, is, yeah, the Money in the Bank should be at WrestleMania. Yeah, Money in the Bank shouldn't be its own pay-per-view. There as good be... as the pay-per-views have been over the years... Yeah, the the pay-per-views. out of all the gimmick ones, Money in Bank's probably been the best. Yeah, I would if I had to include actually, actually considering because it was it used to be part of WrestleMania, which makes sense. If I had to make a big five, you know, besides Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, WrestleMania, and Survivor Series, I would probably include Money in the Bank. I would agree. Yeah, maybe TLC too. Maybe TLC. So far, TLCs haven't been that great, to be this, honest. Last year's hasn't been that great. 2012 was good. Yeah, 2012 right. was great. 2011 was pretty good, if I remember too. Um, wasn't didn't I find it funny? 2012 had like the Miz on the cover. Oh yeah, the Miz wasn't originally gonna be in the match card, but he was on the cover of the poster. But the then cover? they, it was the Miz. The cover of TL, uh, oh. TLC 2012 was Looking the Miz. Like oh no, was that Survivor? Oh, wait, that was, yeah, Survivor, Survivor Series. series. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I, I, I'm totally we're botching. Ro- I'm totally yeah, we're botching our, our thoughts here. But anyways, the half-ass poster for 2013s. Another one that I'm particularly interested in because I've seen him fight before, uh, and he's a, he he moves around for a big guy. Um, uh, Alexander Rusev's uh, debut match. If you don't know, Alexander Rusev is a Russian guy from uh, NXT, uh, and he does some really nice kicks. By the way, he can just get his leg up pretty high and everything for a big guy, and he moves around really quickly. Uh, it looks like he has a good amount of... I don't know if he has too much stamina, to be exact, because he is a big guy, and I don't know how how long he could go around in a match and move around like that in a match, but uh, he seems pretty interesting, and if he debuted at WrestleMania with, with a match, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, what do you take on that? It'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, I, don't, I don't know much. You don't I, know much about him or anything? Yeah, I haven't really looked up much about him, but... Technically, his first match debut is Royal Rumble, but, you know... Yeah, that was like in a... That was the singles match. That was like, yeah. I think they'll do it after WrestleMania because a lot of the people debuted after WrestleMania. Yeah, they might do it then. Now, one that doesn't make sense at all, to be completely honest, uh, besides the first one, is uh, Barrett versus Big E. <laughs> Barrett hasn't wrestled in God knows how long, and they're going to randomly throw him in a title match with Big E Langston. That doesn't make sense. I don't get that. I'm sorry, Bleacher Report. We agree with you usually a lot, but this does not make sense. <laughs> so, no, I don't know. I I don't understand this one. Uh, now, one that I would love to see actually, is, another one that I'd love to see, is uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio because it could kind of be like a rematch from like maybe SummerSlam of last year, in which case Ziggler could really shine in this and win and beat Del Rio, unlike last time. Yeah, it should be a good match. I think they put on. They do put on good shows. Yeah, that like their summer, remember. their SummerSlam match was great. I don't, even, I don't, even, I don't even remember. Did they faced off at SummerSlam. It was I think like, I only remember the. Oh no, it was uh, Extreme Rules. It wasn't Extreme Rules. It was what's in between Extreme Rules and SummerSlam. A few pay per views actually. It was hey, the match. No, before SummerSlam. Mike? 
It might have been Money in the Bank. See, Money in the Bank. Yeah. Um, it wasn't at SummerSlam. Now I remember. Because at SummerSlam, it was like Ziggler and... It was like Ziggler and some... It was Ziggler and Caitlyn versus AJ oh, and... Oh, yeah, the mixed tag team match? Yeah, it was the mixed tag team match. I believe at Money in the Bank, that's when uh, it was Alberto Del Rio versus Ziggler. I can't remember, actually. I yeah, know what happened. We'll look it up. Yeah, just... Uh, we'll put it in the comments. Yeah, put it in the comments, I guess. Because, um... I know they... I, all I know is that they had a title match, and unfortunately, Ziggler lost his title there. Uh, but it was a, a really... Concussion. It was a really great match. Yeah. Um, but, uh... Could be good. Yeah. Now, the next up... Uh, this is actually one that I'm... I'm not, I'm not saying... I'm not gonna say I really want to see it, but, I mean, it's gonna be a good match, most likely. Uh, AJ versus, uh, Naomi. Could be very good. Yeah, um, AJ puts on great matches, obviously. She's put on really great ones with Caitlyn. Uh, Naomi's good, too. And Naomi's good, yeah. They better Naomi, than Cameron. She's so Way much, better than Cameron. She is so much better than... Did you know? Did you see that, that Cameron versus AJ Lee match again on SmackDown? It was for the title match. And it was oh, so, yeah. She was already screaming. Someone commented, like, worse than the Bella Twins screaming. The Bella, and the Bella Twins scream so awkwardly. I hate it. I hate their, their awkward... Someone, someone said the Cameron one is worse. Somebody apparently said... The Cameron, Cameron one is pretty bad, too. Apparently, Cameron screams really awkwardly, too, apparently. I'm I'm sorry. Um, It's just... Cameron is not going to ever probably... Unless she trains or whatever, Cameron's not going to be better than Naomi any day of the fucking week. Yep. Naomi is essentially a female Kofi Kingston. That's exactly how I see her. She's a high flyer. She's actually really great at, at wrestling. I don't think she. I don't think that's her finisher. <laughs> but, shelter. Uh, one of her finishers. I think it's her signature is that booty bump thing she does. She like runs at them and turns around and shoves their, her face and her. I mean her ass and like their face or whatever. Um, but yeah, that that could be a good match. It could be a good divas match, and uh, I personally think they'll they'll put on a good show if that does happen at WrestleMania, which it pretty much likely probably will. I mean. This is one of the ones that I really can see happening at WrestleMania. Yeah, there's just some of them will seem a little far-fetched, but, like, this one, one or two of them. Yeah. For, but, uh, when's the last time a women's or Divas title was defended at WrestleMania? It's been a few years, hasn't it? I think it's been a few years since the Divas title. Because last year's was the mixed tag team match. And, or, wait, Caitlyn had it that time, didn't she? Or was that AJ? Kay- I, can't, I can't remember that one. AJ beat Caitlyn at Payback for the so title. So Caitlyn had it yeah. during WrestleMania last year. Yeah, I think so. And then before, there was another tag team. And... Yeah, it's been a while, though, a few years. Yeah. Uh, next up is... It'll be refreshing. Next up, though, would be a match that I would love to see. This is another love right here. Giving the love to, like, three matches here. Uh, <laughs> the Shield in their own triple threat match for the title, for the U.S. title. I would love to see this because they all have such great chemistry, and I would, I just, it would be an amazing match. Uh, what, what would be your take on this? This could be really good, and Roman Reigns would probably win this. Yeah, Roman Reigns will probably win uh, because he seems the most elevated at the moment. Seth Rollins has actually been doing a pretty damn good job of keeping he was him. Really good in that yeah, chair, man. He was the star of that. Yeah, he was pretty much... Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns uh, were the two stars of the Elimination Chamber match. Uh, Roman Reigns was more so the end, but Seth Rollins generally throughout the the middle of the match was like the main thing to pay attention to. And Dean, Mar- Dean Ambrose was just nowhere to be found. Somewhere that masturbated or something. No, he just got thrown over the barricade at the end. He's out there in a lot of the it, match, though. I guess. Um... But yeah, uh, just this would be a great. It would be a great match to see. Uh, I would love to see Roman win because I'm a Roman Reigns fan. I, actually, I love the entire Shield as a whole, but um, Roman Reigns and, and Dean Ambrose are actually my two favorites at the moment. Seth Rollins is actually starting to grow on me now, though, because he has been he has been doing great. Uh, they're they're letting him be a bit more of a high flyer. You know, before he was just kind of doing whatever. Yeah. You know, they're letting him actually be a bit more of a high flyer and doing his thing. So yeah, you feel like a third wheel, but maybe now he's starting to be a. Top of the line, oh, uh, yeah, top of the line kind of guy. Yeah, I'll make uh, the shield even though they're about to break up. Yeah, even though they're about to break up. Uh, if you actually think about it, uh, Roman Reigns is the powerhouse. Seth Rollins is the high flyer, and uh, Dean Ambrose is the middle kind of in the middle guy that does. Talker. Yeah, well, he does, yeah, he talks, but I mean, like Roman it, Reigns is a good talker too. Yeah, he, he he's a. Like, they actually all are pretty much. They actually are. They they all are pretty good talkers. Uh, 
However, when I say De- when I say Dean Ambrose, I don't mean like his mic skills. I mean how he performs the in the no, how he performs in the match. Oh. He's uh Roman Reigns is the powerhouse, Seth Rollins is the high flyer, and in terms of Dean Ambrose, he's like in the middle, but he kind of does do like uh tactic tech is it called tactician wrestling? Like a tactical wrestler? Um technical, technical. There we go. Yeah. He he uh he does a, he does a decent amount of technical wrestling from time to time. So yeah. And he's the joke. And he's also the Joker. A lot of people say that Dean Ambrose, you know, since Heath Ledger isn't around anymore, uh, that that he could totally fill in for Joker in a Batman movie, which I agree. Uh, he totally could, actually. Why so serious? Why so serious? Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. So, going more in, though, to uh, WrestleMania, uh, uh, we're talking about AJ's title here, and... Uh, Personally, who do you who do you think besides Naomi could actually potentially fight AJ for her title? Who do you think is a little bit Snooker? more? Yeah, Tamina. Tamina's a. But that's a good. That's another way they could go to, or maybe make him to another triple threat and have three triple threats. <laughs> three triple threats. Maybe well, maybe if they do the main event thing, you know, squeeze Daniel Bryan. What, what you're talking other? About what, wait, what other triple threat would there be? Well, you know the the Shield one. Oh yeah, the, if the Shield. Well, that's another if you know. If, if the Daniel the Bryan. If. if the Daniel Bryan match you know happens at WrestleMania and it's a triple threat. Uh, that's how it should go down. Yeah, how it should go down. We're getting a little off topic because that's for later. But uh, you know uh. What we're essentially saying though is that the Daniel Bryan the the, the main event. Randy Orton and Batista should be more so Randy Orton, Batista, and uh, Daniel Bryan, but we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, and then also if the Shield triple threat match happens, then that'd be another triple threat. And if the Divas had a triple threat match, it'd be three triple... Sh- triple threat show. Uh, triple threats are awesome, though. I-, I like triple threats. They're pretty awesome. Yeah, to me, there's the only pers- other person I can think of right now. Fatal four ways are pretty cool, too, though. There's no five-way things. I don't think there ever should be, in my opinion, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd just be really awkward. There's no one sitting... Like, who's... The dude sitting in the middle of the ring just gonna get attacked? Like, there's four sides. TNA could've done it. Yeah, if TNA still had their six-side ring. We want six sides. I, I don't understand why they got rid of that. But anyways. Awesome. Anyways, uh... <coughs> so, yeah, back to AJ's title, though. Um, Tamina Snuka is another person that could fight AJ for her title... Uh, because, you know, she's been the, the powerhouse, the lap dog of AJ, and every now and then she gets, if you notice, they have their funny segments where AJ kind of misuses her, and, you know, uh, one, the one episode where she, like, threw a cake into me this face, it was funny. Oh, on her, like... <coughs> on her, on her birthday or something, I think oh, it was. Oh, it was, like, celebrating the... The her? Divas title or something? Rain or something? Yeah, the rain, yeah. Beating Maurice or something? Yeah, but, uh... It was fun. Uh, uh, I, like the kick she did on, like, Illumination Chamber or something? Like, didn't she miss Cameron or something? And had AJ? Or Tamina or something? I don't know what you're talking something about. Something happened on Elimination Chamber. Anyways. Comment down below. <laughs> comment down below, comment down below, comment down below. Whatever. Here, other people do it. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's not necessary all the, the time. The people are smart. The people are smart. We the people. We the people. Weed the people. Cough, cough, Jack Swagger. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, yeah, but... You know, who else besides Tamina do you... Like, who do you think maybe deserves another title shot? Uh, um, Natalia? Na- oh, yeah, Natalia. I I think... If besides Naomi... Eva because, Murray. No. <laughs> that wasn't even funny. Uh, anyways... Uh, Batista versus Eva Murray. They're both bad. What are you about to say? Can I talk? <laughs> um, right now. But I was saying something. Listen here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyways. So um, you listen here, you little shit. <laughs> no, you listen here, you little shit. Uh, but anyways. I'll tell you why that is bullshit. Moving on. <laughs> Alright, so they've got, you know, AJ uh, pretty much signed up for Na- Naomi right now uh, in terms of a match. And, uh, you know, either I can also either see Tamina Snuka... Versus AJ, but I can also see, you know, maybe Natalia as well, which I personally think she probably deserves it, probably almost the most right now. Who, who else you, could you see maybe deserves? I don't really, uh, because there's, they, they don't have Caitlyn anymore. Um, Paige. She's on NXT. That's all I can think of. Um, maybe Alicia Fox. Emma. Alicia, Alicia Fox could do it. 
Well, Emma's still Alicia Foxy. Uh, uh, Emma is still sort of more so NXT still. The please, dance. Please stop doing that. The best uh, dance ever. No. Moving on. Uh, dance because it makes her happy. It does. Anyways. So yeah, uh, how do you? Uh, you're an AJ fan boy, clearly. Uh, I like AJ, but I don't. I don't. If she, I, she's kept the title for a very long time, and I'm happy about that. But at some point, she does need to drop it, and uh, like Zach's sitting here, like she should never drop it, and I'm just like, it's funny because it's true. No, uh, at some point she's gonna need to drop it, and uh, if she never drops it, uh, when Paige clearly hits the main roster, she will drop it. But anyways, um, yeah, uh, that's the only other person, uh, I mean, you know, he, he's, Zach brought up a little bit of a point there. He, he said Paige, but Paige is still the, the NXT Divas champ, and uh, I don't see Paige leaving NXT anytime soon for a bit, because WWE kind of doesn't know what to do with her in a sense, because if you bring Paige to WWE, you can't... Like, you know, most divas, they tend to do picture shoots and act. They haven't really done it with AJ too much, actually, now that I think about it, though. Uh, but, you know, most of the divas, they go out and they take, they model and they take pictures and stuff. But AJ still, at some point, has done this as well. Paige, a lot of people know, is sort of like a... You know, they, they labeled her as the anti-diva pretty much before. She, she doesn't say that anymore. That's not her little thing that she says anymore. But, uh, you know, it's... It's a Bleacher Report brought up something really funny and, and a good point at the same time is that you can't really picture Paige in a lot of makeup with a swimsuit or something and getting her pictures taken with a smile on her face. It, I'm trying to picture that right now, sort of, and it doesn't she really... She wears a lot of eyeliner, doesn't she, though? Paige? Yeah. Yeah, she wears a lot of black eyeliner. That's makeup, isn't it? Yeah, but we mean the the... the Get you pretty all pretty up for your photo shoot and all that giddy stuff and. <laughs> Where's that voice come from? Uh, I'm a man of a thousand voices, sir. No, that's someone else on YouTube. Are we for referring to? Oh God, what is his name? Oh man. The man of a thousand and one more voices. I forgot what his name is. Voices. Or... He voices. Uh, if you guys know what the Yo Mama jokes thing is on YouTube, he voices. Mama. Yeah, he he voices Brody. <laughs> um, but he does a bunch of other voice acting at the same time, too. I can't remember what his name is. It kind of sucks that I don't remember at this point, but anyways. Why not uh, Zoidberg? Why not Zoidberg? <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, so that's just options for AJ's title and stuff. And, uh, yeah. Moving on, we've got Undertaker and Lesnar. Um, that was pretty much confirmed last Raw on the 27th as well. And, uh... Some people are unhappy about this match. I personally, I, I I like the idea. I just preferably would like to have either him fight Cena or Sting. What's your take on it? Same. Yeah, you know, I I preferably would like to have him fight Cena or Sting since it is WrestleMania 30. It's the anniversary. But um, it's I not mean, the end of the world. You know, but it's not the end of the There's world. Something we're making out to me. Yeah, it's not the end of the world if he fights Lesnar. Taker and Lesnar have put on great matches before, so Hell in a Cell. Yeah, the Hell in a Cell one being the most infamous one. Uh, but you know, I I don't see what the problem is with this match. I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, it, it should be really good. Probably the highlight of the WrestleMania. To be honest, Taker makes anybody look good though. So I mean. Yeah, during WrestleMania's the past years, uh, it's not about the belt, it's about the Undertaker streak. Pretty much, yeah. And as long as the Undertaker keeps wrestling, which again, I think he's going to go 25-0 and 0 at WrestleMania. Um, what will this one be if he wins? 22. 22. Yeah. So yes, three more years, pretty much. Uh, Two more first thing and John Cena and then yeah, someone else. And then Kane. Dan Bryan. Dan Bryan. No, just, th that would be three more. Yeah. So they could actually do next year versus Sting... And then the year after, they could do John Cena, and then the year after, he makes a surprise comeback, you know, because they maybe make it look like he's not going to come back again. And then they do uh, Daniel Bryan, or maybe they do Daniel Bryan next, and then Cena, and then Sting. You know, either way. Uh, you good Undertaker and Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Undertaker, amazing, Undertaker, Undertaker versus Daniel Bryan would be... It'd be like watching Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker again, pretty much. Be, and that's always How would they great. Set that up though, that's what I'm wondering. Huh? How would they set that up though? That's what I'm wondering. What do you mean? Did they turn Daniel Bryan heel? No, Undertaker's fought faces before. Shawn Michaels was a. Fake. I know, but it's hard to. It's tough to see how it would work. 
I don't I don't see how it would be hard to see it work considering it's just, Sean. It's just tough to see. When it happens, maybe I'll understand, but I don't know. Just right now. Where he, they are right now. He fought Sean twice, and Sean was a face. I know. I know so so just, picture, just picture this, the same scenario, then. It's just tough. You make it. You make everything tough. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think Undertaker. Make easy. I, I think Undertaker and Lesnar, and thank you. I think Undertaker and Lesnar is uh, is gonna be a great match, though. I I see no issue with it. I'm personally fine with it. Again, I just would prefer something else, maybe. Um. So yeah, next up we've got. Why can I not find number eight on this Bautista. paper? Bautista. Oh yeah, <laughs> Bautista. All right. Oh. God, WWE, why? You love Batista. Huh? You love Batista. No, I don't. Shut up. Um, Personally, when I first heard Batista was coming back, which, again, I made a personal video on this without Zach. Again, I'm going to repeat, Batista should have been a... Su- See, this wouldn't be so bad if they just would have made Batista a surprise entrant for the Royal Rumble. Still would have been that bad. It would have been... No, it would have been bad, but it would have been like, you know, people wouldn't have guessed it already beforehand, you know? It'd be like, oh, Batista's just gonna win the Royal Rumble and not Daniel Bryan, and you know that's pretty much how uh, I came. I get what you mean now. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much, you know, when I, when when he came back on January the twentieth, right? I like went ahead and saw Batista, and I was like, he's gonna totally fucking win the Royal Rumble instead of Daniel Bryan, isn't he? And he wins the Royal Rumble, and you know, people kind of already guessed that was gonna happen, or um, you know, besides the people that were actually at the Royal Rumble thinking that Daniel Bryan was number thirty, but uh. You know, I, I saw him come back. I'm like, it's going to be exactly like The Rock. He's going to come back and just win whatever match at the Rumble. This one was actually the Rumble match, and he's going to just get the fucking title. Um, personally, uh, as watching Batista, Batista clearly shouldn't have left WWE because, good God, the man is out of shape, even though he's still muscular or whatever. That doesn't really mean that you're in shape, though, if you have a diesel body. It doesn't actually mean that you're in shape. Because the guy clearly has no goddamn cardio and can't move around for shit in a match, and people always are complaining about him fucking not being able to breathe during matches. Cardio is more useful than muscles. Yeah, it is. I'd rather have more cardio than muscles. Miz, actually, there was a picture... There was a picture on Facebook that I saw. The Miz on his TV show, he you know, he used to do a, you know, his own live television show. And uh, he was a lot more muscular on his live television show. He was actually he wasn't big, but he was really defined. He had abs. Are you talking about the real world? Yeah, the real world. Oh, okay. Like he was really defined. He had abs and everything and all that junk. But then when he went to WWE, he lost his abs and kind of lost a little bit of his definition and everything. And essentially what people were saying is that he traded that out for cardio and that's perfectly fine because that means that the more cardio that you have during a wrestling match is the more stamina essentially long ones. yeah is the more stamina building cardio gives you more stamina is pretty much what i'm trying to say um like uh do you remember on total divas uh cameron's like boyfriend Vinny or something yeah like it was all winter some kids like trying out or something yeah for wwe and it was like because he just focused on like the weights and stuff and not cardio so it's important yeah like you know if you guys are ever wondering man like how can these people do it you know for 30 minutes or you know even further than 30 minutes is because these wrestlers have a lot of cardio and and stamina with that uh you know you can be as old as undertaker you know and uh still have a lot of cardio and a lot of left i mean as of recent you can tell that they pause every now and undertaker's matches that's because he's older but you know he still can go for a long time you know, and that's just generally due to cardio. I mean, if you notice, Undertaker's muscles are a little bit smaller. And uh, that's probably because he just probably sits on the treadmill 24-7 and just builds cardio. Doesn't mean he's going to necessarily lose weight because Undertaker's had a gut for the past couple WrestleManias. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying. It, it, I totally forgot what we were talking about. Huh? I totally forgot what the topic was. We kind of went on a little tangent, but... We're talking about... No, this is the same topic. We're talking about how Batista pretty much... We're talking about Batista oh, yeah. and his cardio. I guess so. Uh, you know, it's like, you can't just go out there, you know, and just have your muscle back and everything and then not have cardio with it. You got to have stamina and that's pretty much what cardio is. You can't just, you know, people have been, it's pretty much people have just been complaining that he's not as good as he used to be. And clearly he's losing a lot of breath and everything. And that again, we'll bring this up again. Dolph Ziggler had a match with Batista last SmackDown and Ziggler made Batista look good while also looking good himself. But I watched the match, 
and Batista barely did anything. And then at when when he won the match, which is retarded, I don't know why Batista won the match, but anyways, Batista won the match with a a fucking really bad spine buster, and then uh hit the Batista bomb. And apparently, people have commented and said Batista did three spine busters in that match throughout the entire match, and did his finisher. And yeah. and, and Ziggler made that look good. Apparently, <laughs> Batista did four moves. <laughs> in the golden. Batista, yeah, Batista did four moves, and Ziggler apparently made it look good. Yeah, yeah, it's like also too like he's a part timer come back and he's just thrown in the main event WrestleMania. Well, he's not. He's title. not. He's not a part timer. He actually. Well, I mean, um, I used the wrong word. I, whatever the word is. He's on full time contract for two years. Well, well, like he's yeah, he's been away for a while and then he comes back is what I meant. Oh yeah. You know, he's just thrown into all this and the people like Daniel Bryan stuff working and just kind of. You know, before the stuff. before the CM Punk rumor, it was actually kind of funny. I know, I saw this funny picture on Facebook. And it was of CM Punk, and it's like, oh, I learned that people, uh, you know, he, you know, win matches after they come back. You know, look at The Rock, he beat me. Look at Batista, he won the Royal Rumble. And then it showed a picture of CM Punk with his arms out, and he's like, see you in one year, suckas. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, like, laughing at it. CM Punk. All right, but uh, the second last topic that we have to talk about is, um... Whoa. What? I don't think we have ten topics here, actually. One, yeah, I was kind of looking. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, we do have ten. Huh? Oh, the WrestleMania. There we go. I just didn't mark it. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I didn't mark it. I meant to put it right there. The, what we were talking about earlier is that uh, the final match of WrestleMania, the main event, is you know Daniel Bryan or not Daniel Bryan. It's going to be uh, Orton versus Batista clearly because it's a championship match. Holy crap, people are going to boo this shit so hard. <laughs> you really are, though. Um, I, it's not even a joke. I'm laughing, but I'm just going to be... If this is the final fucking decision, I'm just going to sit there like this. Me and me and my friends are going to... Well, besides Mike and Zach, who actually like Batista and want to see him prosper and whatever. But, you know, like... I don't, I don't know about John, though. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't think John would at all would actually enjoy it. He actually wanted... Remember, he wanted Roman Reigns to win the Rumble, actually. So, yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're just going to all sit there watching WrestleMania and we're just going to stare at the fucking TV screen and let the crowd go apeshit on the TV screen. And nobody just, talk. Nobody and, talk. Yeah, just, no, just, just, just listen to the crowd and laugh our asses off, you know, because it's like every or just like every uh, <laughs> Batista match so far. The crowd, the crowd is, is what makes it awesome because they're they're smart. And I agree with that. I think the crowds have been great lately. And I think that the WWE Universe speaking their opinion finally is something that's great. Yeah, it's probably go on last. I think it might stay two people. It's really hard to say. What we're, what we're essentially saying here is if CM Punk comes back, right, uh, then they're going to probably do CM Punk versus Triple H again. And if that's the case, Brian doesn't have a match. So essentially they could put Brian in the Randy Orton and Batista match, thus making it a triple threat. If CM Punk doesn't come back, essentially what should still happen, though, is maybe there's a stipulation for Triple H and Brian's match. Maybe if Brian wins the match, then right afterwards he gets to be part of the Randy Orton and Batista match, essentially having two matches on the WrestleMania card, making him look even... All right, sorry about that random pause, guys. I have to now edit that out because my mom walked into the room and asked a qu- and asked a question, and I'm not going to leave that in there. But anyways, um, moving on though, uh, we're talking about the WrestleMania. We were talking about the WrestleMania 30 match. The only way that WWE could fix this again is if Triple H and Daniel Bryan have a stipulation of some sort, and uh, you know. Essentially, what happens is if Triple H loses to Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan gets to immediately get thrown into the triple threat match, which would essentially make Daniel Bryan look better because, you know, he's fought through one match and now he's in a triple threat. And if he wins the triple threat and wins the championships, finally, that'd be awesome. That'd be a great way for WrestleMania to end. So that would be kind of low on the card, the Triple H and Daniel Bryan thing? Yeah, like, you know, Triple H and Daniel... Triple H wouldn't want to be low on the card. Yeah. Oh, buddy, Triple H wouldn't want to be. He wants to be in the main event and win. He really does, though. Yeah. Uh, that would be really cool, though. I've, pers- heard, I've heard that tossed around before. Personally, I would love it if Triple H and Daniel Bryan was somewhere in the middle of the card, maybe. 
and then there's there's two matches, and then like you know after that, that's when you know the main event happens, and if Brian Brian gets thrown into the main event, that would be great. That's personally what I think should happen. If it doesn't happen, then that's kind of lame. Imagine Triple H won it. If Triple H won that match, I fucking will throw the biggest fucking fit. I, I don't fucking care if you own the goddamn company. If Triple H wins the Daniel Bryan versus Triple H, Triple H match at WrestleMania, I will just go into an insane ra- fucking rage. It, it No. Just no. I think everybody will. Everybody will boo him so goddamn hard. Yeah, and, and, and they will boo the main event even more. And the only good match probably on the card would be Brock Lesnar and Undertaker then. And, and it would cement that Triple H doesn't like putting people over. And... And anyways... Except if you're Undertaker. <sighs> yeah. Anyways, uh, so now we're going to talk about WrestleMania in general as a whole. And pretty much how the fans haven't been exactly getting what they've wanted for a while now. Um, and how superstars are feeling, you know, untreated, you know, are just getting simply treated badly and everything and all that. Firstly, I'm going to cover the superstars that have been getting treated badly. Uh... First one that immediately comes to mind is obviously Daniel Bryan. He's been in the title picture since last year, SummerSlam. And, you know, hasn't won the title since. Uh, well, he won it at the Champions, but then... What do you mean? He dropped it again. He won it at SummerSlam. Then Randy Orton won it. Then he won it back at Night of Champions, if I remember. Yeah, apparently... But then he hasn't won it back. WWE yet. actually has counted this, by the way. If you go on Daniel Bryan's... Superstar page on WWE.com. They actually say he's a two-time WWE champion. He technically is, but it's not really longer than like, extremely meaningful. Yeah, it's uh, the moment at SummerSlam was meaningful, but just you know. Yeah, I. It's ridiculous. Personally, I think he should have just stuck with it at SummerSlam. You know, but uh, you know there are other superstars too, like you know Ziggler and Ryback and. Uh, and Ryder and Drew McIntyre and 3MB entire, uh, entirely, actually. That's a name. That there's um, Alex Riley, Evan Bourne, who was apparently supposed to come back, but he still hasn't come back yet. Barrett. <laughs> if I get interrupted one more goddamn time. Anyways, <laughs> that's two edits. At least I know that there's two around roughly the same spot now. <laughs> that's two edits that I have to cut out now. Goddamn it, Avast. Yeah, my Avast virus updater fucking thing on my computer updated. And it was so ungodly loud because we were watching Botchamania, so I wanted to turn up the fucking volume on my computer. Next time, remind me to please turn the volume on my computer off regardless because Avast is just probably going to update during the middle of a video and I'm going to have to edit it out a goddamn again. We should protect it. Shut <laughs> up, Zach! <laughs> just uh, anyways, as I was saying, uh, you know, we can see that, you know, a bunch of people, though, haven't been getting pushed like they should have been, and, uh, it's a little ridiculous, uh, the main names that do come to mind, though, are, you know, what the hell did they do to Ryback, and why isn't Ziggler still World Heavyweight Champion, and Daniel Bryan should be WWE Champion by now, still, and, uh... Kofi. Yeah, oh yeah, Kofi, you know, he was supposed to get a push, and then they didn't do anything after... It's the same thing that happened in 2009, right? What? Kofi got a push, and then they just kinda ended it off, and awkwardly and just yeah he had a few to penny one he had a really <coughs> big one and something happened it's it's ridiculous yeah. um but yeah uh fans are just generally not help uh, happy with the company at the moment i can uh, obviously say that i'm not too happy with it either at the moment it's uh probably a lot of the people you mentioned aren't either but it's just like if they say something sometimes you know like they'll get lose their job or something and they yeah, don't want to do that it's ridiculous too like how... they walk on eggshells like i heard someone say like a like a uh, legend or something was backstage one time. He was like the environment was kind of like you know walking on eggshells. Nobody really wanted to say anything. Nice environment, but people got to stand up, you know. Yeah, um, it's it's ridiculous, you know. Um, superstars that should be pushed aren't getting pushed, and you know superstars that deserve belts aren't getting their belts and stuff. It's a little ridiculous. A lot of people are unhappy with this, and. Uh, it's kind of insane, to be completely honest. You know, WWE, they'll build up somebody so goddamn well, and then eventually they just don't win a title or, you know, a match, and then they just suddenly just drop after that. But they build them up, and they keep them in the title way too long, like John Cena or something, and you know, and Hulk then, Hogan. Yeah, and then they, they don't 
win and they lose to somebody that's more at the round table like Cena or freaking Triple H or you can you know. still keep them in like the upper thing it's just not in the main event all the time you know yeah if you want to keep them up there that's fine that's one thing something you know, that's that, yeah something that's really annoying about John Cena is that they always put him in the damn main event you can have him at one of the higher up matches even in the middle of the main uh, the pay per view card mm. But you don't need to necessarily have him in the title picture all the damn time, which he has 13 titles already. Like the WrestleMania thing with Bray Wyatt, <laughs> they'll be kind of refreshing because he won't be in the main event. Main event but usually yeah. is, you know, he'll be upper there, you know, but this is to probably put someone over or something. Yeah, um, personally, I think that if I was already going to have to grade WrestleMania 30 without watching it, I'm going to say that it's probably going to wind up being like a 3 out of 10 stars. Because there's only going to be the Undertaker versus... That's the only thing I can think of that's going to be good, really, really good is the Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar match. We don't know the if... Shield one, maybe. Huh? Or are you saying confirmed? Like, confirmed so far, yeah. Like, I mean, okay. Much. Maybe I'll give WrestleMania 30 a, a 5 out of 10 if the Shield and AJ Lee match, you know, impress me. But, you know, that's only if they happen and if, you know, they do impress me. Which the Shield one obviously will, but... I don't know if AJ Lee and Naomi can really do a good job. I'm sure they will, because Naomi is good and AJ is really good, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's... I don't really see... How do you see WrestleMania so far? I really don't see it being that great. Yeah, not too much. Hopefully, there'll be some surprises or whatever. You know, um, things that we might not expect, and you know that might elevate it. So, hopefully, it's not as it might seem right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I, I really don't want to see... The, the current card is not really that impressive so far, and besides one or two matches. Pretty much. Like, I'm sure Daniel Bryan and Triple H will be a good match, and maybe even Batista and Orton, but that's a giant maybe, because fucking Orton would have to carry the match. And Orton is a good wrestler, but he's... I don't think he can carry an entire match by himself. Uh... But I just, the, the card does not seem that impressive so far, and they seriously, in my opinion, need to make some changes. Yeah. Get your shit together, WWE. Yeah, get your shit together, WWE. And on that note. Yeah, on that note, that's pretty much all we got to talk about, guys. Um, whew. <laughs> long video. It's not longer than the other one. The other one was an hour and 18 minutes. This, oh, is, yeah. this is an hour and almost three minutes. <laughs> Not that close. I, I generally predict these to be an hour long, though. We had 11 topics to talk about last time, which is why it kind of stretched out. I mean how it gets to an hour. Huh? I don't even know how it gets to an hour. It seemed like it wouldn't take that long, but... It's well, cool to do. Well, you see, you like to interrupt me sometimes and make jokes, and, uh... That's, Just making points. That spins points. Making that, educated no, points. That, no, that takes up time and effort and valuable research. Do people like me? Shut I'm the, the star of the show. Shut the fuck up, Zach. <laughs> He's an asshole. <laughs> You're an asshole. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of WWE Talk. And yes, that is the official name so far. It's the one that... I didn't like the show at the end of it. I didn't like WWE Talk Show. So I was just like, you know, let's just call it WWE Talk. Because, I mean, how do you feel about the name? We are talking about the WWE. <laughs> yeah, we are talking about the WWE. It's, a simple, it's simple and it makes sense. Anyway, so yeah, this is the second episode of WWE Talk. I hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always for more. And uh, Zach, would you, you gonna give you goodbyes? Peace. Yeah, peace and stay sexy, motherfuckers. Outro. I, I didn't hit the finish button. I missed the finish button. Sweet mother of God, I missed the finish button. Ah, see you guys later.